Praise the Lord. Beloved, you're welcome to It's Your Time. I'm Apostle Yankofi bringing you the word of God. And today I bring you the part two of that great message, Overcoming in Challenging Times. This is a word in season, and I know you will be blessed. Beloved, trouble, Bible says, comes, springs forth from the ground as surely as sparks of fire fly upward. And there's none of us in this world who can ever see you go through your whole life without any kind of trouble or challenge. But praise be to God that we do not live in fear of challenges and troubles. Why? Because we have God. Amen. And he will enable us to overcome every struggle, every challenge by we looking unto him, by our obedience to his word, hallelujah, by committing our course unto him. So right now I'm taking you to Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry where I preach this good word. You will be blessed. Stay tuned. When two people are in a, a wrestling bout, it's a challenge to see who wins. It doesn't mean that Mr. A has won. It doesn't mean he has won yet. It means that they are groping and grappling. May the best man win. So when your challenge comes, it's the same thing. The trouble has come to grapple with you, to wrestle with you, to, to fight with you. May the best man win. And I'm bold to tell you that you are the best man. Why? Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. As a Jesus in you is the hope of glory. And he's a strength, overcoming strength within you. Amen. Prevailing over challenges. How do we prevail over challenges? The scripture I read to you from Job chapter 5. Really, after I read through, and it's a scripture I love. I said, this is the summation of this topic God has given me. It's a summation. Prevailing over challenges, overcoming challenges in life. This is the summation. The first thing is that he said that trouble does not come from the ground. Neither does it spring forth from the dust. So as surely as sparks of fire fly upward, man is born unto trouble. And he says, therefore to God will I commit my course. So unto God will I commit my course. So when the challenges come, the first thing you do is to commit your cause to commit that issue to God. Because by ourselves, we can do nothing. There's nothing that by your strength, your wisdom, your ability, your connections, you can do something about. You know, there are many things, oh, oh I know somebody, I know God, they will know somebody. But a time will come when everyone you know can't help you. When no one you know can, can help you. There are certain issues in life, nobody can help you. Not the doctor, not the nurse, not the... Bank money, no one can help you. It takes God. Oh, you didn't hear me. There are certain things now, it takes God. There are certain things that you can't even express to somebody else how you feel or what is going on. There are certain things that are too shameful to you to even express to somebody. And so you keep it in there and it is eating you up. But then unto God will I commit my course. Hallelujah. Unto God will I commit my course. So overcoming challenge, the first is commit your course, your ways, and everything happening unto God. You see, God is a righteous judge. At the same time, he's a merciful father. There's nothing in your life that he doesn't know about. All he said, tell me, you come and tell me. You know, sometimes when you're naughty and your father knows you spoiled it, and they ask you, did you spoil the radio? Meanwhile, he knows you spot it. He's just asking you to see where you tell the truth. Commit your cause to God. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what is happening. It doesn't matter the situation that seems so big, so terrible. He said, I'll commit my cause to the Lord. He said, if I were you, that's what the NLT says, I'll go to God and present my case to him. Commit everything into the hands of the Lord and leave it with him. So our challenge is that we will commit it into his hands. Lord, I commit this issue into your hands. And the next day we'll, be, we'll come like Billy. To, who knows Billy? <laughs> I've told the story of Billy. Oh, he said he knows Billy. The little boy who went to school and there was a project. <clears throat> and they gave everyone seeds that they should put their seed in the jar with the, with the, with the sand and everything, water it. And then let's see whose 
um, seed germinates first. So they give them these little jars and they go home. And Billy gets up the next morning, looks at the thing, can't see anything germinating. Wonder, is the seed there? Is it really going to germinate? Then he, he sticks his finger and takes the seed out and looks at the seed. And he plants it again and waters it. After three days, his seed has not germinated. So they take their project to school and everybody has a little sprout. Billy's doesn't. And teacher said, why don't you have your thing sprouted? I don't know. So, but it should have sprouted. By. What did you do? So I kept on taking it out to check it out whether it's coming. And no wonder it didn't sprout. Because he did not allow that seed that he had put in the ground the time to break and to germinate. And that's what we do with our troubles. We commit it into God's hands. Say, God, here, this is my trouble, this is my case. Here, we give it to him. The next day we say, God, give it back to me. I need to chew on it a bit. I need to think on it a bit. I need to see whether, you know, and we do it by saying, oh, I don't even know whether this thing will work. Oh, I don't know whether this thing will work. Your utterances are like Billy's taking the seed out. When you have committed your case <coughs> unto God, leave it with him. I said, leave it with him. And water it with praise. And water it with your faith confession. Just keep on watering with faith, your faith confessions. Water with your faith. Keep it in there. Keep it with him. Stop going back for it. And making calls. Oh, I don't even know what's going to happen to me because this and that. And you've told 10 people. You've brought out that seed out of God's hands 10 times. You've gone for it 10 times. No wonder we don't see breakthrough or we don't see quick answers to prayer because we have committed our cause to God and take it from his hands. We take it often. But then Job said, that if I were you, I would present my case to him. And I'm telling you that the first way in overcoming challenges is that after you have committed your way or the challenge to God, leave it with him. Leave it with him. Leave it. He said that he does great and unsearchable things without number. He said he gives rain upon the earth and sends waters upon the field. He, he gives so many things to God that he said he disappoints the devices of the craft so that even their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He said he exalts those who mourn to safety, all telling us that God is able to handle every challenge. So he will deliver you from six troubles. So yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you. And so he delivers us from that which is too strong for us. Keep this situation, keep the case in God's hands. Stop going for it. Amen. Seek God and his word. Because God will always have a, 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 a path that he will tell you to go on. That will bring you the victory. David, at a point, Bible said, was greatly distressed. Because he and his men went to war and came back and the Amalekites had totally robbed them. Taking everything they had, including their wives and their children. And his men were angry with him. And Bible said they, they thought of, they spoke. They even think they spoke of stoning him, killing him. Because you led us to battle, and now look at what has happened. And can you imagine a whole army general suddenly has lost the strength of his henchmen? What is he going to do? And they are blaming him. Say so he was so distressed. And he and the men, they wept until they had no more strength to weep. Men, grown-up men, sitting on the floor and weeping. And they say, we will stone him. But Bible says that he was distressed. Because the soul of his people were grieved. But, there's a but there. So, but, first Samuel 30. But, David encouraged himself in the Lord. You see, in the challenges of life, if you are waiting for somebody to encourage you, you'll be waiting a long, long time. Because everyone has their issues. Everyone is thinking about their issues before they think of yours. But it's important because even if you are not personally encouraged, you don't encourage yourself in the Lord, it doesn't matter how many words people come to speak to you. You won't take it because you are discouraged in your spirit and you have decided that you are discouraged and I will be discouraged and I am discouraged. Why has this happened to me? Why this and why that? You are not allowing that encouragement. I remember a long time ago, Reverend used to say something to me. He said that, he made up his mind on the day, may God bless the souls of his daughters, that he lost his daughters. So he made up his mind a few days later because he realized that people were not even allowing him to mourn. 
An old lady called him and said, Reverend, um, number one, sorry about your loss. Say, thank you very much. They said, huh, I have a trouble. My son is giving me problems. Then he said, Madam, please, I mean, not, I'm not in any good condition. Stay to talk. I just lost my daughter. He said, I know. That's why I first of all began by telling you sorry. <laughs> and, she, and she went back. And you know, I'm telling you that my son, they said, Ma, please. And he said, I know you are bereaved. But you see, pastor, then she said, Pastor. That means that you're a pastor. So stop talking about your grief and listen to my own and sort me out. <laughs> he said, back and forth, back and forth. He said, I give up. He said, tell me your trouble. You tell me your trouble. And she, he listened to her trouble and prayed for her. And it made him even feel better. But you see, he realized that there, there are certain things in life that if you don't encourage yourself, nobody has mercy on you. You must encourage yourself in the Lord. You must encourage yourself in the Lord. Whatever comes your way, there's something that you need to tell yourself. From the word of God, you need to speak to your soul. And that's one thing I love about the man David. He often spoke to his soul. He said, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? He said, hope that in the Lord, who is the help of your countenance and your God. So why are you disquieted my soul? Calm down. Sometimes you need to tell yourself, calm down. Sometimes you need to tell yourself, Nana, stop crying. You need to speak to yourself. I speak to myself a lot. Because as a pastor, in fact, no mercy for the cripple. <laughs> people don't have time for your woes. Well, a few people, yeah. But most often, people don't have time for your woes. They get over it. So I have to encourage myself in the Lord. I said, I think as after all, God has done this. God did this and God did that. So why can't he do this? Oh, come on. Let me move on. You understand? You must come to the place in life where you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he called for Abitha, the high priest, and bring the effort. And let me seek God. Unto God will I commit my cause. Seek God and prosper. He said, bring the effort. God, that time, that was the medium by which they asked God for, um, you know, whether I said yes or no. And he, when they brought, he said, God, should I pursue these people who have come to steal from me? Will I overtake them? Will, will, will I get them? Will I get my, my family back? God said, rise up, pursue, and you surely recover all. And upon the word of God, he jumped and he ran to pursue. You see, oftentimes the reason why we pray, in fact, one of the reasons why we pray is to get an answer. But the answer often comes in the wisdom that God will give to us. The reason why we don't prevail sometimes is because we are not listening to the instruction, to the prayer. People think that when we pray, that the things fall from the sky, boom, like that. Sometimes it's wisdom. When you pray, you get the mind, do this. And when you follow that path, then your breakthrough comes. May we learn to listen for the instruction of God. And not just to hear it, but also to obey it. Because when God said, get up, pursue, you will surely recover all. He didn't sit down and twiddle his thumbs and say, oh, God, are you sure? God, are you really sure? But I don't know whether to go east or west, north or south. Lord, are they going to down the plain? Have they gone up the mountain? That's what we do. But he got up and he started going. Well, he didn't know. But as he was going, as he was going, as you are moving on, as you are going on, even in spite of the challenges, keep on moving on. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Am I talking to somebody? Don't stop. Because the enemy wants to stop you. That's why some of you will become you know, a recluse. You are stuck in your trouble. You don't move. He said, keep on moving on. As he was going, God allowed him to, or God brought into him, to him a, a young Egyptian boy. And he asked, have you seen this? Oh, I saw them going that way. May God give us divine direction. May God give us counsel in our challenges. May God give us direction in our trouble. But listen to this. And when he followed, truly he got to the people. He beat them by the strength of God. And he took his wives, his children, and everything else. And the Bible says that David recovered all. He and his men, they recovered everything that they had stolen from them. May God give you recovery. May God bring you to the place of divine recovery. For everything you have lost, 
for everything that is broken, for every challenge in your life, whatever has even been destroyed, God is able to recover. I pray for divine recovery for every one of you. Restoration of your peace, recovery of your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that may God restore your health. Oh, Jesus, may God restore health unto you. I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of all your wounds, says the Lord. May God restore your health. May God restore you financially. Everything you have lost, even if you are in debt, may the God who is a debt-canceling God and a debt-paying God, may he bring you to the place of recovery. Ah, he said the silver is his and the gold is his. He said he knows where he has put the vein for silver in the earth. He knows where he has put the vein for gold. May God who sees the whole earth and knows where there are gold deposits and diamond deposits and books and deposits, may he bring you to the place of restoration and recovery of every wealth, of every money that you have lost in any way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Recovery. David recovered all. He took back everything that had been stolen from him. He took his family back. This one, I pray that if the challenge is with your family, may the grace of God enable you to take back your family. If it's your marriage that is on the rocks, I pray this morning that may the God who restores bring restoration to that marriage. You know something? There's a difference, I keep on telling you, between restoration and repair. And yesterday I had a prime experience. I was going to a funeral. I wore my black um, cassock dress. And as I was going to the car, I saw something at the side. Oop! There was a tear. He must have said he didn't burn the dress. I thank God for him. He didn't burn the dress. He is my son. But, I mean, it was burned. You could see the iron thing, and you could see a slit, a hole. And I was, was Minister Phoebe. I said, Minister Phoebe, never mind, let's go. But I don't have time to go back and change. I'll be late. So I sat in the car, and I always keep, you know, a sewing kit in my car. So I said, just do the black thread for me. And I sat there and I started sewing. I sewed it, and you know something? I'm not saying I don't know anything about sewing. I tried. But when I finished, I could see the thing there. And I said, I'll cover it with my scarf. It was sewn, the hole was not gaping, but there was an evidence that there had been a tear. That is a repair work. But not so God. I said, not so God. To every challenge, God doesn't do repair work, God does restoration. That he fixes it to the point where there's no sign that there was ever a tear. There's no sign that there was ever a burn. There's no sign that there was ever any issue or problem or challenge. I'm talking about overcoming challenging times. Unto God will we commit our cause. And the restorer of the broken walls of our life will bring divine restoration. There will not be a sign. Ah, like shared that Meshach and I begged Nigo. There will not even be the smell of smoke upon you that you had been through fire. There will be that total restoration. Hallelujah. To every challenge that you are going through or will go through, because as I said, trouble will always come. Don't let go. Don't let go. David didn't let go of his family. He didn't let go. He refused to let the enemy take what rightfully belongs to him. Some of us are so quick to let go. But you must grit your teeth and be like a bulldog. Hold on tenaciously to what you know God has given you, to what you know belongs to you. Don't let go. I said, don't let go. If you know me, I'm a very tenacious person. If it becomes violence or violence at times, I can be violent. You know, when something, I mean, I'm not letting go. And I mean it. Don't let go. Do not let go what God has given you. Sometimes we let go too quick. Oh, and the doctor has said, so I resign myself to my faith. Really? Really? The doctor himself will tell you that I leave the rest to God. Yes. Don't let go. Hold on tenaciously in faith to what you believe is yours. And trust God. Don't give up on yourself. We give up on ourselves. I can't take it anymore. Never speak those words. Can't take it anymore. Where are they? So I can't take it, and I can't take it. And these are, I found something. People use jargon, the in words. I'm down, I'm down. Done what? Done what? In 1980, there was nothing like I'm done. Those of you who are a bit old, was there anything like I'm done? I'm in TV, I'm in You're done what? Oh, I walk. That one is a new word. 
and you just take it. I'm done, and I'm done with it. I walk. Walk away. You don't walk. You don't walk go away. Oh, come on, stop that. Tell them about stop that. Ja, I can't get it. No, 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 no. Ja, I can't get it. I mean, we are talking about the tangibility of faith. Holding on until you don't have the strength to hold on. And even that, I tell God that God, when I can't hold on anymore, you hold on to me. Because there are times where I try to hold on, but my hands are slipping. But you hold on to me. Overcoming in challenges, challenging times. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. And finally, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Lift up your hands and we worship. We worship you, Lord. Lift up your hands this morning and you worship God. Oh, praise be to the Lord Jesus. Amen. And this song just comes into my spirit. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fast into the rock which cannot move. Planted firm and deep in the Savior's love. Listen. We are planted in him. We, we are established in God. And the amazing thing about overcoming challenging times is this. is that God is on your side. And he will give you every help that you need. Because God does great things. That is what the word of God says in Job chapter 5. He does great things, unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. Hallelujah. And he will deliver you. And he will help you. He will provide for you. I want to prophesy into your life that you will make it by the power of God. Challenges, situations have no power over you. God gives you overcoming power. God will give you the wisdom that you need in these times. God will give you the help that you need in this time. God will give you the direction that you need in this time. So fear not. Fear not. You have overcome. God bless you. Let me pray over your life. I just want to bless you. Lord, I bless this beloved viewer. Love, I bless you with the blessing of God. I bless you with the strength and the power to overcome all things. Ah, David said, by my God, I run through a troop. By my God, I leap over a wall. I pray that power into your spirit, that you run through every troop. You leap over every wall. That you come to the place of victory in every area of your life. I pray for you for sustenance. I pray for God's provision for you. Financial help and financial breakthrough. You will not lack for any good thing. You will not borrow. You will rather lend by the blessing of God upon your life. God bless you, beloved. God bless you. And know this for sure. The challenging times have no power over your life. Because God... He is God, and it is He who has power over your life. And God is good. He'll be good to you. He will show you kindness. Amen. Now, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, this is the time. This is the day, the very minute, the very hour. Amen. You know, people say Jesus Christ helps us to cross every crisis. It's true. Amen. So with Jesus in the boat with you, you will indeed laugh at the storm, as they say. So why don't you invite Jesus to come into your life, to take over your life, to be Lord and Savior of your life. Pray this after me. Stretch forth your hand towards me. We are touching and agreeing in the spirit. And pray this prayer. Make it your own prayer. Pray after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God who came to die for my sins. Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. You are born again. Amen. You belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. He's now the bishop and the good shepherd of your soul. But you know something? You must find a good Bible-believing church to attend, to worship God. Now, I want to invite you to Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry right here at Jason Trade Fair, where you find us there. Amen. You can also join other branches scrolling on the screen. We have a branch here in Accra, another branch called Ashaman Branch. You can also visit us. You will be blessed wherever you go. Amen. So stay in the Lord and walk in overcoming power. God bless you. And if, beloved, you are being blessed by this ministry and you want to support this ministry, you want to send a kind donation to this ministry to help in the work that we are doing, it will be appreciated. The Momo numbers and the banking details are scrolling on the TV right now. God bless you as you 
bring in your support. Have a wonderful week. And remember this, challenges can't stop you. Overcoming power is given to you through Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.